Good morning, everybody. It is 9.01 here in Florida. God bless each and every one of you this morning. Um, I wanted to come on this morning because I saw a few different comments on the channel here that uh, kind of caught my eye. And you know, this channel is primarily a teaching channel. Now, I, I do have a whole bunch of dreams, but I have a whole bunch of teachings on it, too. And it, I primarily teach about the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace, His love, and His mercy. And, um, well, just basically the Word of God, uh, the best of my ability, um, with the uh, guidance of the Holy Spirit and the um, 47 years that I've been a Christian and the last 16 years of spiritual warfare that have led me to what I'm doing right now. Okay? Um, so... With that being said, that is my main objective, is to give correct doctrine, and it's only from the scripture, it's from the word of God, okay, um, and that is basically what, well, that is the only thing that we are supposed to go by, is the word of God and the Holy Spirit that indwells us, okay, um, now, the Bible does talk about having shepherds, you know, teachers and preachers, uh, because if we don't have them, then, you know, how can we be drawn? We are drawn by the Holy Spirit, by the hearing of the Word of God uh, unto salvation. So, with all that being said, um, I would also like to add one more thing, that the Word of God is an eternal document, and... It was written by appointed and anointed men through whom the Holy Spirit, as he breathed upon them, they wrote. So we have to stick to scripture. Sometimes we hear Mary Lou say something that came out of her carnal mind. And then we dream about it. And then... We put it on a um, video thinking that it's scripture uh, and it's a false doctrine. So it goes from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And that's how false, false doctrines, um, fables, which Paul, you know, he, he talked about and he preached against, um, happens. And that's why we got to stick to Scripture, you guys. we got to do our very best. If we don't understand Scripture, that's why we have uh, teachers and shepherds among, amongst us and also the Holy Spirit. All we got to do is ask the Lord, and I'm going to tell you something. He will tell you the truth about a Scripture. But you've got to look. You've got to ask Him with all your heart. And you've got to be willing to research and uh, search the scriptures and the truth of, of them, okay? So, with all that being said, um, I'm just going to read a comment. I'm not going to use names, you guys, because like I said, this is just primarily a teaching channel. I'm just trying to teach you guys uh, the truth about the Word of God. It, it, there's no condemnation. I'm not bashing anybody. God bless each and every one of you. Hey, we should all be teachable because none of us know everything okay including myself all right so and and if there's anything that I ever do say like I've always said in my my videos well let me know if it's in scripture I will go to the Lord with it I will ask the father he always tells me I'm not kidding neither he will always tell me the truth about a scripture he's always been so faithful to me like that uh, in every other way too but um, I'll ask him, I'll go in prayer, and then um, normally how he answers me is in my dream, okay? So, with that being said, let's read a couple comments here and then I'm going to answer them, okay? Uh, this says, being saved doesn't mean going in the rapture. We all have different roles to play. Some will stay, and some will stay, stay on the earth, to help others, but will be given protection and are still saved. I think in the first fruits rapture, it will be mainly the children that will go. Okay, so I, I want to address this here in a couple of different ways. And I always say, all right, well, 
if, if you believe that doctrine, then um, I'm going to have to ask you to, to show it to me in Scripture. Uh, and normally you need to have a Scripture, and you need to have uh, two witnesses to that particular um, Scripture that is just basically you see it at, at face value, it's there. You can't go wrong with what it's saying, okay? Out of the in the context of what it's being saying and who it's being said to. That's that's rightly dividing the word. Okay? Alright, so I'm gonna go to Second Thessalonians two, seven through eight. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then it says in uh, verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So, he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. And it says in, well, in many different scriptures, but it says in Ephesians 4.30, uh, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you uh, are sealed till the day of redemption. Well, he bought us at a heavy price, and that is with his blood. And he is going to come back, and he is going to redeem what he paid for, which is his bride, his children, and that's us. That's the church, the um, Jew and the Gentile uh Anyone that accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior by faith, okay, um, you are going in the rapture. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That word taken there in the Greek is genome, which means uh, harpazoed, raptured, um, snatched, okay? It means taken out, taken out of the way. So when the Holy Spirit leaves, we're going with him. There will be nobody here left that indwells the Holy Spirit. Uh, we'll be taken up with the Holy Spirit as he goes to heaven. Uh, not saying that the Holy Spirit's not going to still be here on earth. Uh, because that's what it takes to draw people to Christ is the Holy Spirit. It is the spirit of the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And everything was made by him, and through him, and for him. And then the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. So Jesus is the word that spoke everything into existence, because he was with the Father from the beginning. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He is also the written Word, so that when the appointed and anointed men of God um, wrote, the Holy Spirit breathed upon them. And then He is the Word that became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And it, you know, the natural man cannot receive the things of God. It takes the Holy Spirit to draw, um, to draw a man, to draw a woman to Christ. And faith cometh by what? By hearing the word of God. So the Holy Spirit is all in the word of truth. The word of truth is inside of you. And the word of truth is what made this life everything in it so when he leaves we're going with him the body at that point the church the bride um, and the child we're also known as the child the children of God we are adopted sons and daughters of the most high God okay so I hope that answers that question right there well not question it was a statement and also, no, it won't be just children that go. And the first fruits, let me explain the first fruits. The first fruits, uh, we are the first fruits among the dead in Christ. You know, he was crucified, he was buried, 
and he rose on the third day, and he was the first brethren of the dead. And we, through our confession of faith in him, are his first fruits. Okay? Now, Israel is Jehovah's first fruits. The Lord God, the Father God, that is his first fruits. Okay? So, um, the children are not just the first fruits. Well, we, as the body of Christ, being children, um, right now we're adults, but in his eyes we're his children. Okay, adopted sons and daughters of the Most High King. Uh, we're all going to go. The little ones um, and, and the the uh, ones that are grown are considered children. We're all going to go. We're all going to go. Um, let's see, what else did you say that was... Um, oh, that some of us are going to be here during the tribulation period, helping um, the ones that have been left behind. Well, if you can find me a scripture that would support that and two clear witnesses to it, well, then I'll consider it. Until then, <laughs> that to me is a false doctrine, and that came from Mary Lou and Jack and Jim and Tim and Tom and Lisa and you know whoever else it passed on from one end to the other to the other to the other okay it's from their carnal minds it's not in scripture because if it was in scripture I think I would have found it already and uh, because I've heard this false doctrine over and over and over again and I, I just don't believe it's anywhere in scripture but if you can find it and show it to me well then uh, like I said I'll pray on it take it to the Father and ask him uh, whatever scripture you show me, what the truth is of it, and uh, then uh, I will maybe, well, if he tells me that it's true, if the Father tells me, then I'll change my thinking on it. Uh, as of right now, I don't believe that there is any, any scripture to support that. Okay, so we have another one here. Um, I'm not going to give the name again. This person says, um, both your good works and dark works will be tested by our Lord's righteous fire at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, that's the Bema seat. And um, we, at this point, are in our glorified bodies, which means there is no sin in us, and we are walking in perfected love. Our sins have been, our sin debt has been paid in full by Christ. We are considered righteous by His righteousness that's imputed to us through our confession of faith. Um, what that means by the works is you're going to get your rewards. Um, all the things you did, well, let's, let's put it this way. If you have a channel here on YouTube, and, uh, well, yeah, you believe in Jesus, you know, um, now do you believe in him in the right way? I don't know that, okay? But you have a PayPal. You, you, you've got a, you're being, you're making money off of God. And that's the way I look at it. Okay, that might make some people mad. But um, unless you have a doctrine, and unless you have gone to theology school, unless you have, you know, a big church building, and you have lights, and water and people to pay, secretaries, mission uh, that's going out. Um, oh my goodness, if you're giving to the poor um, and things of that nature, and this has become your livelihood that you are doing nothing but eating, sleeping, and working for the Lord because you love Him. And you have a church to maintain and a rent and everything else well then yes you know that's different if you're getting paid for that but if you're sitting at home and you're putting a PayPal up on your channel and you're you know getting paid basically um, making money off of God 
and you're putting whatever you are on your channel and you're doing it what a couple hours a day maybe an hour to upload a video you know now there are teachings that I've done that has take, taken me days but I'm going to tell you something right now you will never see me take a dime from anybody unless I am in dire need if I am in real need you know that's different then that's just brotherly love am I going to sit here and put a PayPal up here pay me for what I'm doing here, no, mm -mm. no, ma'am. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. So that is your works. That's your works. Why are you doing this? Are you doing it because your um, dad, 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 all the preachers, and you feel obligated to do it too? Are you doing it for money? Are you doing it for prestige? Are you doing it for your pride to make you look good? Why are you doing what you're doing for the Lord Jesus Christ? Why did you help the, the old lady across the street? Why did you um, give to the missions church? Why did you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? What was in your heart when you did it? What's in your heart? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. As a man thinketh, so is he. So, what, what is your uh, motivation for doing what you do for Christ? You know, if it's to make money, then that work is going to be burnt up. You're not going to get a reward for that. Mm -mm. Um, if it's because you want to look good in front of people, that work's burnt up. You're not going to get anything for that. Um, are you given to Mary Lou because you're going to get a reward in heaven for it? <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that work's going to be burnt up. Okay. Everything you do from the love, from your heart, for mankind, for one another, because it's from your heart. He knows our hearts. And he, you can try to hide it from him all you want, but it ain't going to happen. He knows our hearts. He knows the marrow from the bone. So he knows what your intentions are inside of you. And I don't mean to sound harsh on this particular uh, teaching I'm giving to you right now. I just want you to understand that, you know, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And it has to come from the love of our heart to do so. Um, you know... It, so that's what the judgment seat, the Bema Seat of Christ, is all about. What are you going to get uh, rewarded for? You know, you're going to get rewarded for loving God and loving man. And in truth, not because, oh, I'm going to get rewards. Oh, I'm going to get paid. Oh, I'm going to look good. No, it has to be because it's something that's coming from your heart, out of love, out of love, okay, so that's what that is, and then this person says, those works which are burnt up will suffer great loss, okay, well, you just won't get rewarded for it, I'm just going to put it that way, that's what that means, and then it says, the disobedient, saved, subverted, an unbeliever will stand before the great white throne of judgment. The disobedient saved, subverted, an unbeliever will stand before the great white throne of judgment. Okay, well, that's not true. <laughs> okay, the disobedient saved, you cannot be saved and be disobedient. You're being obedient when you get saved. When you repent and you say, I'm a sinner, I need a Savior. I know I'm a sinner, um, and I need you, Jesus, and I thank you for everything you did for me on the cross. You are now saved and sealed to the day of redemption if you believe in your heart that he is who he said he is, and he came to do what he, what he said he did in the Word of God. And you're faithing on him for his righteousness and not your own. See, there's a problem there with pride right there. You know, oh, Jesus' Jesus's point is 
69, and I got a point, and that makes 70, and us together <laughs> got me saying that no, 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 no. <laughs> Only his 69 points, 70 points, whatever it is, got you saved. Okay, I'm just looking at it from a, a game standpoint of view, you guys. Uh, not what he did and then what you can add to it and what you can maintain. Uh, got you saved. Uh-uh. We are saved by grace. Unmerited favor. Through faith. It is a gift. It's a gift. That he has given us. Even though we are wretched. You know, he loved us while we were yet sinners. He loved us while we were yet sinners. And do you know the Lord loved us so much and loves us so much that I'll bet you anything that he would have done and went to that cross for you if you were the only one that was going to be saved on this earth by receiving him, by receiving whom the Lord, Father God, sent. Okay? Uh, now, disobedient saved people are not going to be at the great white throne of judgment uh, to be judged. Our debt, sin payment, has been paid in full by the Lord Jesus Christ. He gets all the glory. He's the only one deserving of the glory. You know, honor and glory goes only to the perfect Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb of God. I said it before, I'll say it again, Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to atone for your sins. Jesus in Hebrews 10, 10 is the one-time sacrifice for all people and for all sin. It was put on that cross, and a death that's been paid in full is a death that's not still owed. Amen. Okay? All right, so the great white throne judgment is for people that, uh, well, they chose not to believe on Christ. Period. They chose not to believe on Christ. They chose to, you know, whatever. They meditated themselves. They thought, they were getting their salvation or whatever. I'm not going to get into all that, but that, you know. And then, uh, let's see, I'm going to say one more thing here. And this person also says, you, child of God, will be their accuser testifying against them for the evil works they've rendered to you while living in this realm. Now, Jesus is the only one that it puts out judgment. Our accuser is Satan. Okay? He is the accuser. He is the chief accuser of the brethren. That's what the word Satan means, accuser. He is the accuser of the brethren. You know, it, it, you child of God will be the, their accuser. No, no, no. Satan is their accuser. He accuses to God, before God, Night and day, all the time, about the brethren. Well, look at him. Look what they did. Look what they did. Look what they did. He is our accuser. You know? And Jesus will be the one that will be in judgment on the great, in the Bema Seat, and in the Great White Throne. Judgment. That's it. That's it. So I just wanted to address these particular um, false doctrines that are... You know, I've been said here on the channel, uh, uh, you know, I try not to um, sound too harsh when I'm giving a teach, teaching sometimes. You know, I'm a very passionate person. And um, I, I pray that you learn. Uh, go look it up. Look up things that I've said to you. You will find that they are very true, okay? They are very true. Study to show yourself approved. 
and uh, and and the, and the the biggest thing that's the problem with me with these type of comments is because it puts the brethren in fear, and that's why I get a little upset about it, you guys. And that's for I, I mean I'm just being for real, um, and I just want them to learn that these things that they are saying are untrue. They need to do a little bit more research in the word. And uh, get a little better clarity and ask the Lord God is what that lady Sherry is saying is that true and do your own research okay um, I love you I do love you brother uh, I, and I love both people that put these comments I really do you know all I want my, my main goal is to just get you to see that um, the things that you're saying is not in scripture it's not scriptural it's not rightly divided and it's um, if you are seeing it in scripture I would like to see it at, go ahead and put it on the channel here and um, you know sometimes we are we are interpreting scriptures incorrectly too so rightly dividing the word, who is Jesus talking to, what is the context, what is the grammar, what is the original language, um, all these things have to be put together in order, and who is he speaking to, in order to put to, be put together to um, give us a truth about a particular scripture, okay? So anyways, God bless each and every one of you. Um, you know, like I said, I don't mean to <laughs> sound harsh, but that's not me. You know, that's not the way I am, you guys. Um, but um, that that one caught me off guard that saved people are going to be in front of the great white throne. and They're, they're going to be judged. No, they're not, because their sin has already been paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came. But anyways, God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen.